Hi, this video is designed especially for students who are using Macintosh computers, which do not let you have the Excel data analysis tool pack add-in. So we're moving to Google Sheets. You can see here I'm in my Chrome browser, and I'm at docs.google.com, and that's actually now called Google Drive. And I've opened up a spreadsheet. It has a green icon that looks kind of like a spreadsheet. And I've typed in the data from table 25.1. It's the same data that the textbook used as its example for teaching you the analysis of variance. I'm going to show you how we can get the add-in that will help us do the analysis without a lot of uh, drama and terrible computations, and will give you the answers that you need. So I'm going to go to the spot that says Add-ons. And right now, I removed that add-on so that I can show you how to find it. I'm going to the selection that says Get Add-ons. And it brings me to a place where many of the dozens of add-ons for Google Sheets are available. The one we're looking for is called XL Miner. And then it goes on and calls it a tool pack, but that's enough to locate it. So when I find Excel Miner Analysis Tool Pack, you can say that you can see that it matches the analysis tool pack functions of Excel. It's free, which is a nice price. And it takes it just a minute or so to get ready to install. I have to let it have access to my spreadsheet, so I accept that. And then all it does is tell me it's installed. Nothing dramatic happens. But when I go to the Add-ons menu, I can now choose it. And when I say Start, it runs for a moment, kind of getting itself ready. And then over here on the right-hand side, it tells me that there are a variety of different procedures. And notice our t-tests are also over here. So we'll be able to make use of those when we need to do the post hoc tests. For now, I'm going to pick the ANOVA single factor. And when I open it up, you can see it's going to ask for an input range. It gives me the chance to have labels in the um, header row, and that's good. It helps me read my output according to that independent variable or grouping variable. I can choose whichever alpha I want. It offers me 0.05, and then I'll have to choose where to put the output. So let's begin with the input. I'm going to select everything from the header of the medication column to the very last diet supplement. And when that's selected, if I click in that box, you can see that it puts A1 through C11. That's the correct range. I double check it because I'm not using a named range here. When I'm sure that that's right, I'm going to come over and click on labels in the first row. I'm going to accept 0.05 for my alpha range, and then I'm going to put the um, output adjacent to the actual data. So when I've selected that cell, if I click in the output range, I've now set up everything. When I click OK, Google Sheets goes ahead and does the calculations. Because this screen doesn't get any wider, I'm going to close my Excel Miner tool pack. The first thing it gives me are the descriptive statistics. It shows me my 10 people in each group, um, the sum of their scores, more important, their three means, and the variance. If I wanted to report standard deviations, I would add another column here and just use the STDEV function, as we've done in Excel, in order to get those computations. But here's the part that's um, the most remarkable. I'm going to make this a little bigger so I can see my um, well, I can't make it too much bigger without going off the screen. I'll have to shrink that. Um, it shows me my sum of squares and my uh, for between groups, within group, and total, the degrees of freedom that go with it. It divides across to create the mean square for each of those. It takes the mean square between, divides it by the mean square within to give me my actual F statistic. And in, if I were working with the textbook, I would then have to look in the back of the book to see if this is larger than the critical value. But the Excel Miner tool pack goes ahead and tells me the actual p-values. So this is answering, what's the probability that I would get an F statistic 
this large, 14.099, if in fact the mean of all three groups were the same, which is what the null hypothesis would be. And you can see that the p-value is very small, much less than 0.05, which means I would reject the null hypothesis. And the uh, data pack is even nicer. It also shows me the critical value that I would find if I had a table that gave me exactly 2 and 27 degrees of freedom. The critical value for f would be 3.35, and my computed or calculated value is 14. So the calculated value is larger than the critical value. That lets me know, again, that I would reject the null hypothesis. So for the analysis of variance work this week and also next week, I'm going to suggest that Mac users stick with this Excel Miner uh, data tool pack. And we'll probably use it for regression um, for some of the things because there's some nice features in it for the regression when we get to week 7. I hope this um, is as good for you as the data analysis tool pack is for the PC users. Bye-bye.